Hello, thank you for your interest in our work in developing Fresnel zone plates for X-ray radiography. My name is Samuel Myron and I am presenting on the modeling and optimization techniques that we are employing and the general direction we're heading. Just a bit about myself, I'm, an, I'm a graduate research assistant at Los Alamos National Laboratory and I'm also a student pursuing my PhD in statistics at Virginia Tech University. Since we submitted our initial abstract months ago, we've had unexpected hiccups in obtaining the high resolution images that we claim to have had in our original abstract. So instead, we're taking a closer look at the design tool we've been developing for designing Fresnel zone plates. What this poster has in store today is a brief explanation of why FZPs are worth studying in the first place, why they are challenging to design for a system, and our approach for making this design process easier which features a model and an optimization scheme. Then I'll discuss our unique optimization architecture, a few results from our design tool, and I'll conclude. In the field of inertial confinement fusion, a long-term goal is to achieve ignition. However, hydrodynamic instabilities such as richtmeier meskoff and Rayleigh-Taylor instabilities complicate our route. Understanding and analyzing these instabilities to eventually control them are crucial. A common method for analysis stems from X-ray radiographic images of these instabilities. While usually this is done via pinhole cameras, which have much to recommend them, they're less strong in the resolution and signal throughput criteria. Poised as strong complements to pinhole cameras are Fresnel zone plates, or FZPs. FZPs are diffraction-driven lenses composed of alternating opaque and transparent rings. While they are more difficult to manufacture and field, they can reach higher resolutions and better throughputs than pinhole cameras. While FCPs are promising, designing an FCP for a given system gets complex rather quickly. First, FCPs are highly sensitive to chromatic aberrations. Secondly, the design space in the geometry of the FCP has a lot of moving parts. For example, the thickness governs the efficiency of the lens for a given energy and the minimum zone width determines the theoretical resolution. But as you decrease the zone width, you run into manufacturing constraints like lithography limits and impossible aspect ratios. These challenges motivate our design tool. Briefly, our design tool is implemented in Python and features a model and an optimization architecture. The inputs to the model are the many components of the system, the FCP geometries, the optical alignment conjugates, the backlighter spectrum, and much more. Then the model computes the expected blur of the system and produces an output of interest, like a line spread function or a cost function. Finally, our optimizer utilizes the PyTorch neural network module to exploit the automatic differentiation and optimizer flexibilities of PyTorch. The model functions by first assembling all of the system components, relationships, and filtering the backlighter spectrum. Then we utilize the mathematics of an isotropic point source in order to project rays onto the FCP. Next, for every ray that strikes the FCP and for every energy in the spectrum, we calculate the blur. Then we aggregate all of this information in one of three ways. There's more information in the appendix about these three different methods. Uh, finally, from the aggregated blur, we go ahead and produce an output of interest, and one of these outputs could be a cost function. The cost function is a necessary component in any optimization scheme. We utilize PyTorch for its neural network package to exploit its optimizers. Essentially, we spoof a neural network. Because in a neural network, you have a set of inputs on which a series of functions are applied to produce an output, and then the parameters of these functions are optimized to minimize some cost function. What we do is we assign our inputs as a series of ones, and we assign the parameters we want to optimize, like the FCP thickness T, as the weights of our neural network. Then we assign our model to be the series of cost functions. And then we optimize that cost function, and uh, which we're utilizing the negated product of the signal to noise ratio and the integral of the modulation transfer function. The results from our model and optimization process are shown for a Fresnel zone plate we fabricated many months ago. The details of the system we designed are shown in the top left table. However, at the time of designing our FCP, we did not have a fully developed tool like we do now. 
So we went ahead and ran our optimizer once, allowing the FCP geometry to change, and we ran it again by fixing the geometry only. The results of these two optima are demonstrated in teal and pink. Surface plots on the right visualize the surface of our cost function, and we see that the optimizer successfully finds systems that produced better cost functions. We also see in the plots on the bottom right that optimizing this cost function does indeed lead to a more refined line spread function, modulation transfer function, and resolution. We've learned a large number of things so far in this project, and we also see areas in which we can improve. Briefly, we developed a design tool that provides valuable information to designers during the design phase of the FCP, and also during shot day by visualizing the alignment tolerances. We also employed a unique optimization method through PyTorch, and we realized that PyTorch is a great tool. That is, it's relatively easy to convert a code into its framework, and in return, you get a large benefit of automatic and cheap gradient information. Finally, we intend to validate our model by acquiring real data during some shots we have planned in September, as well as by analyzing previous data acquired through some collaborators at the University of Rochester. Additionally, we intend to expand our blur calculation modeling by using full spherical wavelets using the Huygens Fresnel diffraction formula to see if that gives us a better description of blur than ray trace methods do. With that, thank you for listening and please feel free to ask me any questions that you may have.